too uncommon. They happen. All right, the next question is from Mad Scientist. He said, what do you think the cycles Arnold and people from his era used to run? I want to get a physique like the guys from Arnold's era because I like the look and think it's healthier. Basically, I'm just trying to get a somewhat classic looking physique. Yeah, I like that too. Me too. I'm going for the same thing as you. Um, so with the cycles that they ran, you know, what's really cool is that Rick Drayson on YouTube, he was one of Arnold's training partners back at Gold's Gym. And he talks about what they used and what kind of diet they ate over there uh, back at Gold's Gym Venice in the 60s and the 70s. And so we get a lot of this information. Obviously, the dosages that he says is like tone, toned down because, you know, people don't talk about like IFBB pros and just people in general like that talk about on the open air, like dosages that bodybuilders use or dosages that they use. They don't say the real dosages that they use for one thing because they feel like, well, if people do this, you know, that could get them hurt. So it's like liability. And then for another reason, it's like not politically correct. And it makes the the bodybuilders look kind of like stupid or something because this is being huge like that requires drug abuse and like winning competitions and stuff like that. It like requires drug abuse. So, you know, it's not a good look and it's not flattering. And if you're heavily involved with that, you've got a lot to lose. So that's why people don't talk about the, uh, the dosages that, that are correct. But you know what they used back then, like the Arnold, Arnold and those guys, it was mostly D ball. Like, Diana Ball is what they were building up, like, their muscles on. Sergio Oliva and Larry Scott, Mr. Olympia, Arnold. You know, D-Ball was a big part of it. So they'd take D-Ball tablets throughout the day, not once a day. Take 5 milligram D-Ball tablets throughout the day. And um, they'd usually take DECA, something like 400 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams of DECA per week. And because they knew that steroids orals work better uh, with an injectable run in there. And the thing with DECA is that since they, they wouldn't use any testosterone, they would just use the DECA. And when you do that, it doesn't have a big effect on hair loss the way that testosterone does. And also, it allows you to still have like a sex drive and like functioning libido and stuff. So... When DECA is paired with testosterone, then it starts giving you side effects because it does a bunch of weird stuff in your body when it's mixed with testosterone. So if you just do DECA alone, you're going to avoid a bunch of side effects. So basically what they would do is DECA and D-Ball or DECA and Winstrol or DECA with Anivar, um, and Arnold would get Primobolin. So Arnold used Primobolin too, especially around contest. He would use Primobolin from Europe, him and uh, Franco Colombo, and whoever they shared their Primobolin stash with. So that's what they used back then. <laughs> and they also used cadaver growth hormone. They used this stuff called Crescormin. And what Crescormin is, is it's uh, pituitary glands from human cadavers, and they grind it up. The pituitary gland and they uh, they purify it into a growth hormone extract and it's got a bunch of different it's it's not like the pure rdna uh, 191 amino acid growth hormone that is made today it was a growth hormone extract from the pituitary gland and they'd inject people with this stuff and it was super super strong so it was an experimental drug it was mainly meant from kids who were like had genetic diseases to make them be growth hormone deficient and not grow but some of it got diverted to bodybuilders um and also nfl football players like lyle alzado who had that brain disease with the prions that killed him and he was like he was famous because he was a nfl player that said like steroids killed me <laughs> and it, it wasn't steroids it was actually cadaver uh chris corman human growth hormone that he was injecting while he was playing in the NFL in the 70s. That's what killed him. 
because prions are misfolded proteins and sometimes uh, people would have uh, a disease called creutzfeldt jakob disease and then the, they would have the cadaver growth hormone that was contaminated with the uh, with the bad prions from the creutzfeldt jakob disease and it's contagious so then when these people would inject themselves with those growth hormones the crest hormone just a few people there was a little bit of contaminated crest hormone but it happened to you know at least at at least like a good a good little group of people and Lyle Azeda was one of them it goes and attacks your brain gives you Crisfield Jacob disease and one year after contracting that you die so that's what happened to him that's what killed him not steroids now they make a human growth hormone by rDNA recombinant DNA technology so the way the growth hormone is made now is they use viruses to go and make genetic changes to E. coli bacteria and then the E. coli bacteria starts producing the human growth hormone and then they collect that and purify it <laughs> it's crazy so the uh they actually genetically engineer the E. coli bacteria to produce human growth hormone that's how our dna 191 amino acid pharmaceutical grade human growth hormone is ma made these days it's manufactured by genetically modified genetically engineered e coli bacteria it's great stuff very pure all right 